All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing Hello and welcome to episode 36 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma, I'm your host. This is a podcast about knitting primarily and I'm coming to you from here in Ottawa, Canada where I live with my family and our cat Yoda. You can find a group on Ravelry called Little Big Knits where you'll find the show notes as well as our knit alongs and, and anything else that happens to be happening in the group. On social media you can find me as Selma Knits. So Selma Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. Welcome to today's episode. There have been some new subscribers, so hello and welcome to the podcast. And uh, for those of you who are returning, hello again. Thank you for coming back again. Nice to see you. So, full disclosure, I have lost my show notebook. You would think that during this COVID-19 thing, with all the time that we supposedly have on our hands, those of us who are stuck at home, um, that my house would be nice and neat and organized and it seems to be more of a disaster than usual. Um, I hope I'm not the only one in this state, but it's a little bit, I think the fact that we're at home all the time and I don't know, it's just a bit of a disaster. Anyway, I seem to have misplaced my show notebook. And after each episode, I create a page for the next episode and I start writing down things that I want to remember to say the next time. So I don't have that as a reference. So I may not be saying some things that I wanted to say this time. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've got another notebook here that is actually an older Mari Meko notebook that I have. Um, that has other things in it, but I just made my notes in here, so hopefully I'll be able to keep on track today. I hope this podcast finds you well. Um, I will talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the non-knitting stuff at the end, and that'll include uh, living in the time of COVID. Um, but I do hope this finds you well. I know that this is a time for some that is, is not necessarily that different, but for many, many, many of us, uh, this has been life-changing in a variety of ways. So I hope that there are some silver linings along the way, um, whatever the circumstances that you're in. And uh, thank you for joining me today and, and uh, spending a little bit of time having a cup of something and some knitting or crocheting or spinning or weaving or needlework of any kind that you happen to be doing today. So before we move into the knitting, I'm just going to tell you that there's going to be a giveaway today. It is a holiday season as well, and I just thought, you know what, it's time for a giveaway. So I'll be announcing that giveaway a little bit later on. And also want to remind you before we get into the knitting that we have two knit alongs. Crochet is always accepted. Um, one is the Garment Galore Cow. And the other is the uh, It's About Time cow. So the Garment Galore cow is all about garments, knitting, clothing of some sort, whether it's sweaters or cardigans, skirts, and so forth. And the It's About Time cow is about using up yarn or knitting up patterns or crocheting patterns that you have had around for at least a year. For both of those, you can go to the Ravelry group, the Little Big Knits Ravelry group, and participate in the chatter, participate in, um, in the um, finished object threads, and post projects if you like. Um, yeah, so just come on in. Um, and I think that's about it. I am going to stop for a moment and just change the angle of my camera because I'm finding it I'm finding myself needing to, I think I put it too high, I'm finding myself needing to stretch too high, so just a moment. That feels better. Looks like I've got pink ears, but that's okay. That's my little Easter display up there. 
I've got my little bunny out. He's been out for a little while. They've been out for a little while. I've been sort of uh, not so much excited about Easter, but time for lightness and uh, change of seasons. Although I have to say, I find especially early spring kind of the ugliest time of the year. Um, the snow is melting. It's kind of dirty and yucky. And then everything else is brown. We've had a couple of crocuses come up in the backyard, so that is great. Um, but it's kind of a funny time of the year, I find. Uh, of course, in the next couple of weeks, uh, everything will be starting to uh, show signs of green and color, and that'll be wonderful. Um, so I don't know, somehow this year, often I'm really behind on Easter, uh, but this year I got the Easter uh, decorations and spring decorations out uh, quite early, actually. So let's start on the knitting, but first I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. And once again, Gertie has joined us and I am having the uh, citrus spiced black tea that I had gotten from Suki Tea that Kate had given to me at Hawthorne Cottage Craft when I, uh, in my advent um, calendar. And I had Gertie with me last time as well, my little chicken mug. Some of you asked me where she is from. Um, and I got Gertie at uh, Rhinebeck when I was there last time. So not this last fall, but the previous one, a year and a half ago. And I believe the potter's name is Brown Bunny Pottery. I'll put it down here. I don't think she has much of an online presence. I think she tends to sell at shows and she probably sells uh, locally where she is. Um, I really do hope to be able to go to Rhinebeck again and uh, get another one of her pieces. Her pieces were absolutely delightful. Um, her mugs had a chicken or a bunny or a ram or different animals here. She had um, other types of, of pottery as well. All had some sort of very simple animal design on them. They were absolutely endearing and I've really enjoyed this mug. It's a great size. It's a nice shape. It's easy to hold. It's been great. Her work was very, very nice. So just to start with what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing my first ranunculus. Um, this is, uh, I have to say, I like it more than my second ranunculus. Um, this one was made out of fleece artist Zambezi, which is a mohair, um, out of the mink colorway, which was kind of a brownie mauve. I actually think I have some over there somewhere. Oh yeah, it's right here. Whoops. So this was, this was it, as well as some wool mice lace, which I'll be showing to you later because I'm actually making another project with it. And it's more of a pinky purpley color and it created this very, very nice mauve color. Now, why do I like this one more? Because I think I've mentioned in the past that I didn't think I was ever going to wear this thing and then I wear it all the time. Um, this one I like more than the other because somehow the uh, gauge on the other one is a lot looser and so it's just, it's a much more billowy sweater. Um, this one I can wear with skirts and pants very easily to work. Uh, it's got such a lovely flattering fit up here. The other one does too. But the other one, everything is a little bit looser, so it's a little bit more of a relaxed look. Um, I wear it all the time as well, but feel more that it's kind of a Friday sweater with jeans rather than something that I would wear with um, more uh, a more dressy outfit. But this one just has, it just has a, a really nice drape. It falls in the right place. Um, I think I made mine to be, darn, I'd have to measure. Uh, 11 or 13 inches long. I made it a little longer than the pattern called for because it was way too short for me. But um, it sort of comes just at the top of where the pants would be, really. So my belly button is there, so that's about where I started the ribbing. And uh, yeah, I just really like this. I wear it all the time. I'm sad that I, I'm sad, I shouldn't say, but I'm anticipating that one day, um, you know, because I've worn it so much that uh, it'll be kind of ready for a new one, perhaps. Anyway, I really, really love this. What else? So starting with finished objects, last time I showed you that I was working on the dotted rays and I have since finished it. 
The Dotted Rays is a pattern by Stephen West and I had gotten it out of his book which is somewhere over there um, from the library and because the library is closed I still have the book until they are uh, accepting returns again. Um, but I got this pattern out of that book. It's meant to be knit with a fingering weight yarn on four millimeter needles, but after watching Melissa of Espace Tricot, um, she had made one where she stranded a, I think it was a single ply, mine was not a single ply, a single ply fingering with a strand of mohair. And when I saw that, I realized that is exactly what I can do with the alpaca that I need to, um, I need to find a way to knit it. So I think I have that here as well. Actually, this bowl is becoming quite handy. So I had this alpaca silk from Hedgerow Yarns, um, which I really, really wanted to use. I had two skeins of it, but it just wasn't quite my color. So I ended up buying some Sadness Garn silk mohair in a pink colorway. Uh, that's a more pink and I put them together and it was perfect. I made my dotted rays on five millimeter needles and I made the small size but this is gigantic. So here is where the rays begin and they just go on and on and on. And so this will be very, very much a full coverage kind of shawl. Um, absolutely glorious and quite stunning. I must say, I really love it. Um, just beautiful, just beautiful. I feel like, you know, I am in a, what would I say? I don't even know what to say. It just feels very luxurious and um, sort of, you know, rich looking. It's just beautiful. And uh, so I'm really, really glad that I did this. It was a really lovely pattern. Stephen West's patterns are very well written and he has such an array of patterns. Some are seemingly very, very wacky um, and others are more understated. This is definitely one of his more understated ones. But what I find with his patterns is that I always see somebody, well, most of his patterns, I would say, I've always seen versions that I just absolutely love because it really very much depends on the color choices that you make. Um, so, yeah. But uh, I'm actually going to be showing you another one because I have started a, another one by Stephen West. Um, my husband is eating his yogurt in the kitchen. He's at the bottom of the bowl. Anyway, so this is the dotted rays, knitted on five millimeter needles. It, it starts and, well, the whole thing has uh, I-cord edging around it, and uh, which I really enjoy doing. Um, I don't find it to be particularly um, cumbersome to do. I really enjoy it. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's a thread that I didn't sew in. And I have to say, to block this, what I did, uh, and it almost didn't even really need blocking, but blocking it certainly made it even larger, was that we have one of those folding uh, racks downstairs, and I actually clipped the top edge of it, the top ed edge of it, with sewing clips all around the, the drying rack and just let it hang. I didn't bother doing anything with the bottom part of the shawl, and it blocked out very, very nicely. It really didn't need to be shaped in any way or anything like that. So my next finished object is something you have no idea about because it didn't exist the last time I podcasted. When, after I finished the advent socks, I really wanted to cast on something else simple. And so I ended up casting on these socks and could not stop and finished them rather quickly. They are some very plain vanilla socks um, that I made. Uh, but uh, you may recall that I said that I, if I make socks, ideally I'd like to try some different fibers. So this is actually a skein of yarn that I've had in my stash for probably about three years. So it was about time that I used it. Um, it is a skein of yarn that is an alpaca 
merino silk nylon blend it is called sock yarn um, and it was by misty alpaca so it was a misty alpaca sock yarn i don't know if they're making this anymore um, i am very curious to see how it wears it is a lovely feeling sock yarn it does have a little bit of fluff from the uh, alpaca um, and I just used a sort of basic recipe that I use for toe up. I do uh, a magic cast on or whatever you call it, the magic loop cast on um, with 14 on each side, increase to 64, create a gusset. And then I do Wendy D. Johnson's um, simple or basic gusset heel here that I have memorized and I just, I like the fit of it. And uh, so there you go. Um, at first I was like, what a wacky combination of colors in this yarn, but in the end it all works. I love the pops of mint and the salmony pinks that come through there. So I'm really, really excited. They fit wonderfully. I'm really excited to see how warm an alpaca yarn is in socks. And also I'm excited to see how they wear. How does um, this type of a yarn wear? This is a hand wash yarn, so it won't be necessarily the most uh, practical pair of socks because I do tend to put most of my socks into the washing machine, but let's see. All right, so on to works in progress. The first thing is the Talia, which is being housed in this bag by Dolphina, which is being stretched out because this is taking up a lot of space, this project at this point. Um, I really should move it. Um, I don't think I've done a whole lot since the last time, actually. Um, I got down to the bottom of the first sleeve. That's as far as I've gotten um, because it's been the struggle to see my friend and to get her to try it on and such. So um, I am going to go on and hopefully it'll fit. Um, I'm at the point where I'm going to start the color work and my stitch count is not quite right. So I'm going to have to fiddle with that a little bit to get the color work to, to fit. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll get this done over the next couple of days and then I can start on the next sleeve. So not a whole lot to say there. Um, I don't even remember where I was on the sleeve. I think I might have been around there. So I knit that much. I think I got focused on other things. Like I got really excited about finishing the, um, the dotted rays and I got excited about the socks. So, the, but the Talia is a pattern by Jennifer Steingast, just in case you weren't here last week and I am knitting it. The green color that I'm knitting it in is uh, Peace Fleece. Uh, which is absolutely beautiful and the color work is either in Peace Fleece or some um, Let Lopi. So this color, which is great, is 9423. Um, I have been looking for Let Lopi uh, online and I find their colors online very difficult to really uh, determine whether it's the right color that you're looking for. Their, their shade cards are not very good, I find. It's fine if you want a gray or something like that, but as, as soon as you're trying to find something special or, or particular, then it becomes a little bit of a challenge, I find. So anyway, hopefully that'll get finished in the next uh, couple of weeks. What else have I got on the needles? Um, I did start my rug sweater. I showed you guys the swatch last time. And I really, and if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me um, in my stories. I sort of had a picture with a variety of different colors because I really started having second thoughts. I definitely, I discounted the terracotta color, um, but I started having second thoughts about whether I wanted the turquoise. And, and when I thought about it, what I really wanted was an earthy looking sweater. So here's the yoke so far. I am just at the point where I need to start the color work. Um, and I finally decided on the color, actually colors, that I wanted to use for this sweater and I have a complete mess here. Um, because I wanted it to be earthy, I decided on this brown, which was, I, I wrote it down because I couldn't remember what it was. This was a Filcolana Gotland 
a pale sold that I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival three years ago. And I used the rest of it for a skirt um, that I double stranded with some leftover hemp wool that I had. Um, this is supposed to be a decay, but I have to say it's quite fine. So I thought perhaps I would double strand it, but then I realized if I double stranded it, I probably wouldn't have enough of it. And I also determined that I really liked this black that I have, which is quite a heathered look. This is an Americo yarn, Americo Brezzo, and it is a linen silk wool blend. And it's got quite a heathered look. And I thought that those two could be quite nice. Although now that I'm looking at that, that black is kind of intense. But this is also kind of a fingering sport weight. Um, but I did like the two of them against this gray. So I thought I'll do the brown for the big X part of the pattern and then this for the little details. However, they're both uh, fine yarns. I could double or triple strand this, except that I do want to keep some for a sweater because I've got a sweater quantity of this. So what I decided to do was order some lopi because when I was swatching with the turquoise, um, I realized that it would be fine, but if you've got a whole bunch of color work, that it would probably be a little bit thin compared to this yarn, the Coradale that I'm using from Batten Kill for the main color of the sweater. So I thought if I double strand uh, the Lopi with this, it'll definitely make a thicker yarn. I'll get to use this up and, um, and it'll fill in the color work nicely. <clears throat> Sorry, every time I start talking a lot, I start getting a bit of a scratchy voice. Seems like it's always like that. Um, and the same with this. So I got a heathered black, um, well, I ordered a heathered black as well as the chocolate brown from, from Wool Time, uh, a store nearby. And uh, unfortunately they have to send it. They don't do roadside pickup at this point. So I'm waiting for it. Hopefully it'll arrive because I'm, I'm itching to get going on the color work and to see how, how this will work. But I think that um, this will give it the earthy feeling that I am looking for. If it turns out that um, I don't like the combination of the black and the brown, I'll probably just go with the brown. But I was really struggling to choose the browns online and actually ended up phoning the store because online you couldn't tell. They have one called a chocolate brown and one called an acorn brown. I, it wasn't really obvious to me which one was more of a chocolate brown even though the chocolate brown was called chocolate brown. I thought it probably was, but I wanted to be sure. And they said, yeah, the chocolate brown is definitely your best bet. And then I got a heathered black to go with this heathered yarn. Um, so those will be arriving hopefully early next week and uh, I'll be able to continue with my sweater. It's a very, very bouncy feeling yarn. And I'm actually knitting it on six millimeter needles and kind of thinking if I should go up to a 6.5 um, but I think it'll be, I think it'll be fine. And it's got a, it's a gray, but it's got a slightly greeny tinge to it. So, or bluey tinge, not blue in the, in the normal sense, kind of like a bit of a greeny yellowy tinge to it. So it was a little difficult to pair yarns with it, but I actually think that the brown and the black will be really, really nice. Let's see what happens. So that is the rug sweater by Junko Okamoto. It is a free Ravelry pattern. I put it last time I showed you guys a bunch of free patterns that I have in my favorites, um, and that was one of the sweaters. And it is being uh, housed at the moment in this uh, bucket bag by Buku, whose work I've said many, many times I absolutely adore. So that is work in progress number two. Work in progress number three is being held by another Canadian maker. Actually, all my bags are Canadian makers, I'm realizing. The Dolphina bag and the Buku bag and this one, which is by Jenna Rose. She's actually local here and like Buku, does her own printing. Um, and I've used this bag before. Somehow I seem to be in a rotation right now of using the same bags. Um, 
all my knitting stuff is in the closet in my daughter's bedroom and so I don't know my daughter's often in her bedroom and doing stuff and doesn't necessarily want to be bothered and so I just end up grabbing whatever is around me so I end up using bags over again so in here is a new shawl cast on and this time it is again another pattern by Stephen West I am using two yarns that I had in my stash and this is a very it's about time Cal project because I've had the pattern for at least two years this yarn which is the eggplant colorway by Malabrigo in their sock yarn I've had <clears throat> excuse me I've had probably for about six years at least something like that and this is the wool mice uh, lace weight that I used in this sweater along with this mohair so this sort of brownie mauve and this sort of more purpley color created the sweater that I have I find it very interesting always to see the effect of combining a mohair with another yarn and, and how it affects that yarn. So, um, so yeah, so this is a rather large skein. The, uh, the Wollmice lace garn has, I think, 1,700 yards, something like that. And uh, my friend Dana sent this to me like three years ago, um, I think. I can't remember. And this is in the Mauser Schwanzien colorway. So between these two, I am striping them to uh, make the Knit and Slide by Stephen West. It is also in the book that I had in the library, the uh, West Knits or Best Knits or whatever, or whatever that book was called. Um, I'll put it down here. It's a great book. This pattern is also in that book, but I had already bought this pattern. And it is one of Stephen's crazy patterns where there is striping and then there are these hangy bits. Uh, <laughs> use your imagination. They've been called all kinds of things that are made uh, with mohair and there are little baubles along them and um, a friend of mine had made it and I ha already had the pattern and when she made it she made it in kind of purpley pinky colors and I was like that is the color combination and it suits what I tend to like to wear I think that's the kind of color combination I need to be looking for I was really struggling to find a color combination for this I still would like to have one in really pale colors that might happen at another time I keep thinking that while I'm knitting this but for now, I'm really happy to be using up this pattern as well as the yarns. And I've only just started it. And the, the striping is very, very subtle because the two colors are actually quite similar to one another. So there we go. That is the beginning of it. It's being knit on four millimeter Chowgu needles. And uh, I have to count my stitches. I think I might be up for another increase row but uh, I'm really liking it and the reason I realize why it's called knit and slide is that um, you it's a you always are sliding you're knitting you're knitting uh, the same row twice almost um, it's a very neat concept it's very simple so you're always doing knit and you end up with these garter ridge ridges without having done any purl rows so it's quite a neat concept and um, I'm really looking forward to this. So I'm glad to finally have cast this on and I think it'll be a really nice, um, actually I'm really liking that. Uh, with It's going to have mohair on the ends. Um, I actually thought that I could perhaps use this mohair, uh, but I want something that's a little bit more uh, pinky than this. Th this is very brown. So I've got um, some mohair upstairs that I think will work and um, I'll show that to you next time because it's up there and didn't think to show it to you. And I'm not 100% sure. I have to make sure I've got enough of it. Um, 
If not, then I might end up using two different mohairs throughout that part. Um, and that's another thing I really like about Stephen West's patterns is that you can just, you can go to town and have fun with them. Um, you can use bits and bobs often. Um, his Exploration Station, you know, the original pattern is with four colors, but I've seen versions where there are six colors. In fact, he made a version where there are six colors, so you can just use up yarns and just have fun. So I find he, he really creates a sense of playfulness with his shawls. Um, so I don't feel like now that I've got this started, I feel like I'll make the decision about what comes next when I get there. And uh, I will likely find something in my stash. If I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll end up purchasing something, but I really think I can get away with just using things from my, from my stash. So that is what I can, I actually cast this on this week. And those are the three works in progress. So I really need to get moving on my friend's sweater. I, I've somehow gotten stalled on that. I think I was nervous about doing the color work for the sleeve and then it being too short or too long. Um, but I think I'm just gonna do it. And then when I'm able to see her, she can try it on and we'll take it from there. So, Um, I don't, ha it's not a cast on, but I am swatching for the next pattern. Um, I find I tend to start working on something and start thinking also about what I'm going to make next. And one thing I want to make uh, as a sort of a more of a summer knit, and we are in spring, so I'm starting to think about summer knitting. I want to make the Rift Sweater by Jacqueline Sieslack. This is a pattern that came out... Uh, I think last year at some point, perhaps in the spring, um, I immediately uh, fell in love with it. In fact, she had a call for testers and I applied to be a tester, but I wasn't chosen. Um, and then I just bought the pattern as me immediately when it came out. It was just exactly the kind of thing that I'd like to make. It's got very simple lines. Um, it's got a bit of a, a drop shoulder, but it's a short sleeve. You could make it into a long sleeve. In fact, I think there is a long sleeve version. It can be cropped. It can be a little longer. It's got some twisted rib details that are just nice and neat. Uh, really, really like it. And last summer when I was at the Twist Fiber Festival here in, near, where is it now? St. André d'Avalin. Um, I ended up buying this, well, actually I had ordered it from her, um, from Dale of uh, Farm to Cables, uh, online shop, I had gotten this Retrosario Mungo yarn in this sort of natural colorway. This is a, is it 50-50? Yes, it's a 50% wool, 50% cotton um, yarn made from recycled recycled yarns and you can, you get a sense of that when you touch it. Um, it's a little bit of a ropey feeling yarn and so I'm really, I'm happy to be trying some of Retrosaria's yarn because she's just got so many interesting, interesting yarns out there. Others that I really want to try, like her Vovo, which has just got beautiful colors. So we'll see if I end up buying that at some point. But anyway, uh, I got this last year in August and I'm going, I'm swatching with it. So my first swatch is being done on five millimeter needles. I haven't actually... Um, measured it yet I just started swatching with it and I thought it might be a little loose so I might try a four and a half but I haven't even counted the stitches on this yet so we'll see if it actually um, has the right number of stitches um, and I'll try the four and a half if I like the fabric more then I might have to adjust for size we'll see but uh, I've just started swatching with that and it's going to be a bit of a summer top a bit of a, a layering type of piece um, that again I might wear with you know a blouse underneath and it would just be uh, a layering top but it could also be a summer top and it really I think the cotton really um, creates the effect of being less warm it really doesn't feel as warm as wool does and it is 50 50 so I'm assuming that I'll be able to wear it on uh, cooler summer days uh, we can tend to have very hot and humid days here in Ottawa um, the humidity can be really high and then you really don't want anything but linen or cotton on you but um, but other times I think this will be really nice and it'll be really nice in the spring as a layering piece spring and fall as well so I'm swatching and let's see where that takes me 
So today I have a rather hefty acquisitions section, uh, but before we go into that, uh, in case you're not interested in sticking around for the acquisitions, I thought I would announce the giveaway. So um, we're going to, I'm going to be um, giving away a skein of this uh, yarn, Lichen and Lace, in her sock base, uh, which is an 80 super wash merino and 20% nylon. Uh, Lichen and Lace is a dyer from uh, Canada, from the eastern part of Canada, and this is her Wildflowers colorway, and I thought this was perfect for this time of the year. So if you're interested in the giveaway, I'm going to ask you simply to comment below here in YouTube. Um, so every comment, uh, one per person please, will, uh, will constitute a... Um, an entry. If you really don't want to be part of the giveaway but you'd like to comment below, just let me know that you don't want to be part of the giveaway. But um, but uh, otherwise, every comment will count. So I'm going to give you a prompt. However, you don't need to use the prompt. So the prompt is somewhat COVID related in the sense that it is sort of tell me a little bit about a silver lining or something positive that has um, come about for you during this time. Um, maybe there's been a lot of not so pleasant stuff, but perhaps there is something that has been a silver lining for you or something positive, or perhaps because of the circumstances you have uh, found some positive things. Like I have to say, um, even though we are stuck at home a lot of the time, um, I thought that we would be um, at each other's throats all the time and there is actually a piece in the house between the family members that has kind of blown me away. That was not the case in the beginning um, and it probably had a lot to do with me. I was really struggling with how I was going to manage to telework and have the kids and were they going to have school or were they just going to be in their rooms on their screens and how was I going to deal with that and I was really really quite stressed out about how I was going to manage all of that and Things seem to have sort of gotten into a routine. Um, the days are semi-structured. I'm not going to say they have very structured days, but school uh, is happening online and I feel more comfortable with, with that. And so that's been a silver lining. I really didn't expect that to happen, that we would get into a nice groove as a family. We're cooking together, we're playing cards and games in the evenings together. and. Um, in normal times we would be running around taking somebody to some activity and not being able to relax very much in the evenings so that has been um that's been a really positive thing in a way right um so yeah so comment below if if there has been something positive a silver lining if you are so darn sick of covid right now and do not want to talk about it and have anything to do with it feel free to comment anything below and it'll constitute an entry Okay, and then um, the winner will be sent this along with a couple of little goodies. And um, one caveat is that right now, not every country is receiving packages. So please don't let that stop you from, um, from commenting below and putting an entry. But depending on who the winner is and where you are, it could end up being that we have to wait a little bit uh, before I send it out, or I'll send it out immediately and you'll get it in no time. So I'll be announcing the winner the next time I podcast, so probably in about three weeks or a month, something like that. So here it is again, in case you want to have a look. So, one skein out and many skeins in. What can I say? I've been a bad girl. I swore I wasn't going to buy any sweater quantities. Um, I think my promises are not very good at this point. It's been a weird mix. So I knew that I was going to be going to Knit City and I was going to be spending money at Knit City and that was going to be it, right? Like you go to a festival and of course you want to come away with some yarns. And I actually had a list of things that I wanted to buy for. And then of course Knit City got cancelled. And then also stores are being closed and they're needing to find a way. So I, I found myself um, with a mixed bag of feelings of wanting to um, get some of the yarns that I had wanted and also to support some, uh, you know, some businesses, especially in around uh, Ontario, Quebec, Canada, 
uh, to try and support them. So there was a real mixture there. Now I have to say one of my purchases came from Denmark and that had nothing to do with any of this, but it was just the right thing to buy uh, at this point. So what have I bought? I decided uh, to buy from a store called Unraveled, which is here in Perth, Ontario. I bought five skeins of this Shibui twig in this colorway called Twilight. This yarn is a mixture of um, linen, recycled silk, and wool. I've been wanting to use this yarn for at least two years. Um, I remember the first time I went into Espace Tricot, and I think it's been about two years ago, and I saw this yarn. Specifically, I saw a garment knit in this yarn, and I was just like, what is this yarn? And it was the Shibui twig. I could never decide on a colorway. And even when I went the last time, uh, I, when I podcast, I told you I'd been to, uh, to Espace Tricot, I was looking at the Shibui. I just couldn't decide. And then when I ended up on the Unraveled site, they had it on sale, and they were offering free shipping. So I ended up buying this colorway, and this is going to be made, and most likely this summer, into the um, westbound sweater by Elizabeth Doherty. Uh, I was gifted that pattern last year. Thank you, Kristin. And um, I am really looking forward to making it. So it's going to become the westbound. This yarn is going to become the westbound. The other yarn that I ended up getting in that same purchase was a sweater quantity of this pink cloudy kind of look at this fluff look at this fluff this is the Rowan alpaca classic it is a combination of alpaca and cotton and I believe the cotton is sort of a blown cotton and I got enough of this to make a sweater that hasn't actually been published yet. It's a new design by Sarah Nordland, and I believe it's called Feather in English. I think it was Hohen in, in Finnish. Um, it's going to be coming out in a new Novita magazine, I believe now, and it'll also be published online. And it's a lovely, pass, loose fitting sweater uh, with um, cables and uh, seed stitch essentially and it's just sort of a loose fitting sweater very airy looking and uh, I I was just the, the moment I saw it I fell in love with it and then um, a friend online is knitting it and when I saw her version because I think she's test knitting it uh, or sample knitting it I'm not quite sure actually uh, I was like that I just I have to make it I absolutely have to make it so when I saw that um, Unraveled had this on sale and I realized this is actually the perfect yarn for that sweater um, Well, <laughs> I bought it So that probably won't happen immediately that'll probably happen more next fall I Told you last time that I'm looking for a particular blue and I thought I found the blue at unit uh, in Toronto online I I just happened to go, I don't even know how I ended up there, but I happened to go and see that they had, I was looking through their yarns, and they had the Fiber Company Meadow, which I used last year to make the uh, Edie sweater. It was sort of a red uh, v-neck sweater that I made last summer, at the end of the summer, and it was a beautiful yarn. And when I saw the blue they had, I was like, that looks like the blue I need. So I ordered it. And unfortunately, it's not the blue that I was looking for. It was, it's way more turquoise than what I was looking for. In fact, that's quite turquoisey. It's coming across as a little bit more bright. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. There's a bit of a turquoisey feel, a bit of a purpley. And I think somehow on screen, it was way more, um, you know, toned down in terms of the color. So this is not what I was looking for. Although it's really beautiful. So I've actually been thinking, I think I'm going to keep this for the garment galore cal as a prize uh, because it is beautiful and um, two of these would be enough to make a small top for somebody or a large shawl because the yardage on this is 
quite substantial if I remember correctly. Um, it's 545 yards. So it is a light fingering, um, a light fingering yarn. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this for the garment galore cow, and I will keep on looking for that blue. Let's see if I ever find it. And one last thing. Uh, again, influenced by Melissa of Espace Tricot. She just has such a great, um, a great sense of style. And she knit a top, actually it was her second time knitting it. I think it was on, if not the last episode of theirs, perhaps it was the previous one. She was wearing a black sweater that was the Miromenil by Cleonis which is a pattern I have wanted to make for quite some time and um, just have never had the yarn combination. I have a blue one upstairs that could be, but I had hoped to make something else with that blue. Um, and so Melissa was wearing her Miramenil, which was black, and she had knitted out of one strand of mohair and one strand of linen. And when I went into Espace Tricot, last time I said would you happen to have the sweater that she knit and they didn't because of course she knit it for herself some things they knit for her samples for the store and I said hmm do you happen to have anything knit out of linen and mohair just so I could feel what it's like and so they happen to have one um I don't know I can't remember I think it was some sort of a poncho-y cowley type thing knit out of a strand of linen and a strand of mohair and when I touched it I was like yeah I think the Miramenil would be really nice in that type of a type of a fabric and then I thought I have had some linen in my stash for eight or nine years I bought this when we went to New York we went to New York uh, many years ago eight or nine years ago the kids were small I think Isla was four, which would make it nine. And uh, Alejandro, two of Alejandro's siblings were visiting here and we drove in our Mazda 5, all, uh, all how many of us were there? Six of us uh, in the car to New York City. It's about an eight hour drive from here. And I ended up going to Pearl Soho and I bought uh, this brown linen. And I have swatched with it, and when I swatched with it years ago, I realized, oh, I don't like the texture of this. Like, this is going to be a really weird feeling garment. Very, very transparent. And I've always been at a loss of what to make with this. So, after seeing Melissa's version, I thought, oh, I'm going to get some mohair to go with this linen. They have quite a collection of mohair in Espace Tricot, but I just couldn't find uh, a color that was going to work with this brown. I found a sort of darkish brown, olivey green kind of color that was really beautiful by Shibui, but I thought, I, I think I need to go home and look at the linen yarn to make sure that I'm remembering it correctly. And when I came home, I realized that was not the right color because it was way too greeny, darky for this. So uh, somebody, I think I was watching Fiber Tales Lerke, or was it uh, Sari Nordland has a podcast herself, um, and I can't, they both have knit with this yarn. So I thought, well, let me go on their website and see what they have. It's uh, Knitting for Olive, which is a Danish company, and they have really fabulous colors. So I ended up finding this blue, and I, uh, blue, if this is blue we've got a problem uh, I ended up finding this this brown and I think that will go very well together and so I'm hoping to make the Miromenil out of this this is their colorway plum clay um, on their website and it's a 70% mohair 30% silk so it's lovely lace weight uh, silky mohair yarn so I bought enough of that to go with this So I think I've helped the economy somewhat and I've done my bit <laughs> and I gotta stop. I, I keep thinking, okay, I need to pledge that I will buy no more yarn for the rest of this year. And I'd like to say that I'll pledge that. Um, let's see if I can follow through with it. So those are my acquisitions. And, uh, and that is pretty much the end of the knitting content of the podcast. 
I've already mentioned a little bit about uh, this last few weeks, these last three weeks, I think it was since I last podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, because I am home, I'm still teleworking, but I'm thinking there's a little bit more space in our lives right now. So maybe I'll end up podcasting a little more. Um, it's been a roller coaster three weeks. I think we can all uh, say that um, with things changing all the time, um, you know, borders shutting down, mail systems shutting down, shops already shut down, things changing, school back up. It's it's been a bit of a roller coaster, and uh, so um, I think everybody I speak to has had a variety of emotions that have come with that, and a variety of sort of stages. You know, one moment you feel like everything is okay, the next moment you just feel lost. Um, I have found it kind of difficult to work. Um, it's been, it's been, it's just been a really strange time. But as I said, there are silver linings in it. Um, spending more time with the kids, there's sort of bizarrely calm sense in the house. Um, we've been baking together. Um, I think since the last time, I can't remember now, we had made the madeleines and some lemon squares, possibly we made whoopie pies after that, which was, they were delicious. And um, we made some caramel sauce last week. These were all things that I've always wanted to make and never have. And so we've got a list going of, of things that we're going to make this weekend, Easter weekend, uh, will be very different. My mother, uh, as you know, if you've been watching, lives in a, a nursing home and not far from here. In fact, I can walk there, um, but we are absolutely not allowed to go in. They have been extremely strict. Um, they have zero cases, which is great because there has been another nursing home um, somewhere in Ontario that has been decimated by COVID. So they're being very strict. They're being extremely diligent, which is wonderful. But it means that I haven't seen my mother in a while and I really miss her. But we're going to be Zooming with her or FaceTiming with her on Sunday. They are preparing. Um, they're giving every family some time to um, to FaceTime with their with their family member who's living there. So that's really great. They contacted me and said, would you like to do this? And I was like, yeah, I miss my mommy. So, um, but um, how did I get onto that? Easter, right. So Easter's gonna be a little bit different, but uh, that's okay. It'll be a little simpler. We'll be doing a lot of FaceTiming also with others and that's great. And uh, this weekend we'll be making a tiramisu. So I'm excited about that. I've never made one. Um, it is rather large, so I have to figure out how to share some with others around me because we can't eat the whole thing. So I'll have to find some creative solution for sharing that with some people. I don't know if I'll be able to, but we'll see. And um, yeah, there's been, um, you know, fun Zoom time with people, which has been great. I've also done a little bit of volunteering at the emergency call center for Global Affairs. Um, they take calls from Canadians all over the world. It's a call center that exists all the time. Um, but of course, right now things are ramped up because usually they're dealing with people who are, you know, lost, some have lost a passport or who have, uh, you know, been detained for some reason or, you know, can't get home for some reason, uh, where at, or they've dealt with an epidemic somewhere or an outbreak, a war outbreak or something like this. Uh, right now with a pandemic, uh, they are trying to deal with Canadians all around the world who are trying to return or who are uh, in a difficult situation in some sort. Um, so uh, they're, they're calling for volunteers. So I've gone a couple of times. I'm gonna go again this coming week. And that has been uh, a very, uh, it's been a very rewarding experience. It's been a challenging experience. You're dealing with really stressful situations and you know, it, it affects you in some way. Um, but it's also been really rewarding and it's, I gotta be honest, been really nice to get out of the house. <laughs> it's been nice to drive across the city and go to a workplace. Um, so that's been really, uh, it's been a nice thing to do. So I hope to do it again this week and um, perhaps the next week. Things are starting to calm down a little bit because there have been many, many efforts all around the world to bring people home. So uh, they're needing less volunteers, but they're also having, I think, people who've done a lot of volunteering and are, are perhaps tired and not wanting to do anymore. So they still need volunteers. So I'm happy to, happy to do that. It's been a great opportunity and a really great experience. And um, also been a time for watching some 
uh, things on Netflix. I've watched um, not a whole lot. Um, I'm just starting the third season of Babylon Berlin, which I absolutely adore. I mentioned it in the past. I watched uh, seasons one and two. This is a uh, sort of police show set in Berlin around 1930. Um, there's all kinds of interesting political things happening at that time as the Nazis were were uh, rising uh, in power and um, just it's the scene is amazing the costumes are beautiful um, the music's great it's it's a really very good I really enjoy it and so I'm just starting season three we have completely finished Kim's convenience so we have to wait till I think next January for season number five um, we might just have to watch them all over again. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, also recently watched something called The Spy on Netflix, which I very much enjoyed. It's a true story and uh, about a spy in, um, in the 1960s um, in the Middle East. And I also this week watched uh, something on Netflix called Unorthodox, uh, which was really a very poignant and um, thought-provoking and beautiful uh, four-part show, um, sort of like a long movie in a way, about um, uh, a Hasidic Jewish woman who leaves uh, leaves the, the community. And it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it very much. And uh, I think that's what I've watched. I finished uh, Louise Penny's uh, second book, Fatal Grace, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I'm looking forward to the third one. I also listened to a short story. Um, it was kind of like a docudrama uh, by a man named James Domic Jr. And he wrote, uh, an, and it sort of acted out. That's why I said it was sort of like a docudrama. It's based on a true story about an Alaskan indigenous man who um, became an actor and then kind of went off the rails afterwards. It's called Midnight Sun. And I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I enjoyed the effects and the, the mood that was created. It was, I thought, a really well-told story. Um, and it was, it was really interesting. And right now I'm listening to uh, The Great Gatsby uh, by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And uh, I'm only part way in, so I can't say a whole lot. It, it's sort of interesting listening to it um, and rehearing the story that I read about 30 years ago. Uh, I didn't really remember a whole lot about it, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying rereading that book. And, uh, and that's just about what's going on these days. Um, yeah. So that brings me to the end of the podcast. So I hope that you are finding some joy uh, during this uh, Easter Passover season. And also I think we are going into the Ramadan season. So I hope that there is, even though we're all having to find different ways of celebrating, I hope that, uh, I hope that there is some, some joy there. There usually would be normal, you know, large gatherings and um, well, we're gonna to have to do things a little differently. I think Zoom has uh, probably, their stock has probably um, skyrocketed. <laughs> Everybody is signing up for Zoom. I know I have and it's been a great platform or people are FaceTiming or Google Hangouting or whatever. And, um, and that is working out great. There are, um, my daughter is still doing her piano classes. They're doing it with FaceTime and um, you know, Alejandro uh, is doing some other classes online and so there's lots of different things that are out there to keep us, uh, keep us connected and keep us active in some way. So we're just going to have to take part in all of those things. Um, so anyway, I hope, that, uh, I hope that you will have some good crafting time over the next little while and uh, that you will find some moments of joy as well. Take care, and we will see you in a few weeks. Bye. And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We 
go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly, and the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely. I love you only I love